You're watching Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Thank you for joining us. Our guest is Tony Hirsch. Tony is with the company Hero BX, which is a clean tech energy company focusing on biodiesel. And I want to talk to you. What is biodiesel? So biodiesel is um, one of the few genuine solutions to uh, our energy issue here in the States. Um, it is made from a number of different feedstocks. Um, biodiesel is um, biodegradable, it is non-toxic, and you can even drink the stuff. Oh although, my. Yeah. So, but, but it's I, not ethanol, which is made of corn, because when I think of biodiesel, for some reason I just go to corn. It's not that. It is not corn, no. Corn uh, is, um, really produces ethanol, which is a gasoline. Biodiesel uh, currently is a, a diesel replacement. Now, it seems that ethanol has had you know, a decent run, and it's been around for a while. Biodiesel, I don't know, I hear rumblings about it, but is it in its infancy? Is it a teenager, or where is it in yeah. its life cycle? It's, it's probably not even a teenager. Oh, really? Um, no, it, it, uh, biodiesel is a very young industry, which is part of the issue. Um, the other issues are that you know, biodiesel, being one of the true solutions, um, has had uh, a few people out there uh, and companies with pretty significant resources that do not want to see it succeed, at least not yet. Maybe some oil companies? Maybe. maybe? maybe. I don't know. Maybe. maybe. I'm just saying. And, mm -hmm. and, and consequently, and uh, part of that has been the mm -hmm. kind of lack of um, information that's out there, the lack of um, real knowledge about not just biodiesel, but sustainable energy. So there's a lot of confusion out there, and it's our job to kind of put people straight. At this stage, it seems as if uh, gasoline has become the primary source of fuel for vehicles. You have the Mercedes that use diesel or whatever it may be. Right. That being said, though, school buses are still pretty diesel heavy. Um, so I understand that you have some specific concerns about the school buses and their use of current diesel. Yeah, there are 450,000 school buses uh, in about 15,000 school districts uh, currently running diesel. Um, and uh, Yale just conducted a, a study in Connecticut which showed that the toxicity inside the school bus was five to ten times greater than it was outside. Meaning um, the students that are sitting on those chairs they are ingesting. They are ingesting uh, what we call, it's, it's PAH. Um, these are particulates and aromatics that lead uh, in particular to, or can, can cause, um, in particular, asthma and also cancer. Now, are any school districts therefore turning to biodiesel as a solution? Yeah, in about five states there are school districts. There are about between 130 and 150, depending on which month you're talking about, um, school districts that are successfully running um, biodiesel uh, in their school buses um, and are aware of all the benefits of doing that, which are huge. I think it's fair to say that the first question you must get when you go to Washington or Sacramento or whatever state capital it may be is, what's the cost? Well, Berkeley did a, a study uh, when they went over to biodiesel. Um, and the city they, of Berkeley. The city of Berkeley. And they figured that to run their buses and um, uh, all their clean street cleaning equipment and so forth was about the equivalent of a, a latte and a scone. Meaning the incremental increase is, there's a small increase. I'm wondering though, Tony, is as biodiesel continues to develop as an industry, will those costs drop? because there's more biodiesel being made and just through economies of scale you're going to see uh, cheaper products. A absolutely. I mean, we're in the first phase of biodiesel. We're in probably in the most inefficient stage and the feedstocks that you make biodiesel out of are changing rapidly. The second and third generation of feedstocks, which Hero I think is the, the highest quality biodiesel manufacturer in the States, um, we are looking very carefully at, at Camelina and algae as the future. Interesting. Tony, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hey, Very important topic. Anytime. Thank you bet. You. For Local Edition, I'm Brad Pomerantz. We'll send you back to CNN HLN. Hello, I'm Tracy Young, news anchor for Charter Communications, CNN Headline News, Local Edition. If you missed any of these interviews, you can always watch them through Charter's video on demand, free, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To access all of Charter Communications Local Edition interviews on VOD, please go to Charter's Channel 1, click on Community Interest, and then click on Government and Public Affairs. And thank you for being a Charter customer.